Hi, I'm Arlo Leach. Thanks for your interest in the Auto Harp app. I'd like to walk you through all the features that are available as of version 2.1. And as I show you these features on this iPad, keep in mind that everything you see should work equally well on an iPhone or an iPod Touch. Now when you first launch the app, if you've played Auto Harp before, it should be pretty self-explanatory. All you have to do is touch a chord button and strum the strings. And just like a real auto harp, if you're not pushing any chord button, then all the strings will play. Which doesn't sound too good, but if you press a chord button, it'll mute the strings that aren't in that chord, and you'll get a nice sound. Now, you should be able to strum as fast as you want. should be very low latency with this app. And you can also multi-touch, so you can strum strings on two or three fingers at a time. As long as you can hit those chord buttons fast enough. If you are having trouble hitting the chord buttons, which are pretty small, you can use the zoom button down at the lower left corner of the screen, and that enlarges the interface, makes the buttons easier to get to. Uh, we'll just zoom back out for the rest of the demo. Now that's the basics. The first option that people look for, though, is to change the layout of the auto harp from 15 chord bars to 21. And you can do that if you go to the lower right corner and look for the settings icon here with the little gear and tap that. And this brings up the settings window. And the first option is layout. And you can see that it's set to standard 15 right now. If you touch the edit button next to that, you'll see a window with two choices, standard 15 and standard 21. So all we have to do is tap standard 21 and that changes the layout of our auto harp. And so it works just like before. Okay, uh, let's go back into the settings. And when we tapped layout, you might have noticed there was one more option called new layout. And that's actually an option that lets you customize the layouts of your auto harp beyond the two standard layouts shown here. Let's uh, come back to that. That's kind of an advanced feature, uh, and it's also a paid upgrade. But uh, we'll keep going through the basic features, and then I'll come back and show you that. The next option under layout is effects, and it's set to no effects. And this is for the more uh, non-traditional auto harp players. Um, we have two options here, no effects and a starter program. And let's go into the starter program and see what's happening here. Uh, in this window, we have settings for a chorus, delay, and a reverb. And the delay is going to be the easiest one to hear uh, in this demo, so let's use that. And by default, we have some settings that I think you'll be able to hear. Let's try it out. I'll just save this, and then I'm just going to choose starter program. And so now that's selected in the settings window. So I'll tap done, and let's see what we get. And there's the delay effect. Now, as you can see, if we go back in and edit the effects, and then edit the starter program, you can see that there's a lot of options here. We can change the amount of feedback, which is the number of times that uh, the delay occurs before it fades out. We can increase the speed of the delay, or we can turn the delay off completely and try some other settings. Um, again, you might not really be able to hear these, but we have a chorus, we have a reverb, and if you know anything about how these effects work, you can play around with the settings here and try some different things. Just for the heck of it, let's save this and choose our starter program again and see what kind of sound we have now. Well, that is pretty noticeable. That's a pretty deep chorus effect. Now, if we go back to the effects list, you may have noticed that just like with layouts, there's also a new option at the bottom. This one is to make a new program. The starter program comes with the price of the app, and you can go in and edit it as many times as you want and change it around but you can only just save that one starter program, so you can't save a bunch of different effects at the same time. Um, however, if you hit the uh, new program button, that will invoke a purchase window, and you can purchase the ability to save multiple programs uh, for 99 cents. Once you've done that, you can start a brand new program, you can enter a name for it, and save it, and then it will appear in your list. And then at that point, you can have several programs set up and quickly switch between them without having to go back in and edit all the details. 
Now, if you've been playing around with the effects program and you just want to turn it off, just select the top option, which is no effects, and you'll see no effects uh, as your choice back in the settings window. Let's go through some of the other settings that are simpler. Um, by default in the app, um, the strings are touch sensitive, which means if you uh, strum slowly, you have a quiet volume. If you strum quickly, you have a loud volume. And this allows you to play expressively as much like a real auto harp as possible on an iPad. Uh, but if you don't like that option, you can just turn it off. If you turn off touch sensitive volume, then no matter how fast you strum, it's just the same volume. I'll turn that back on. Uh, play muted strings is another uh, attempt to make this sound as much like a real auto harp as possible. As you know, when you strum a real auto harp, um, you hear a little tick uh, of the muted strings. Even though they're not ringing, you can still hear them as you strum across them, and this simulates that sound. Let's see if we can hear this. You can hear a little ticking in there. Now, unlike a real auto harp, uh, you can control how loud that is relative to the strings that are sounding. So there it's more noticeable. Uh, we'll just uh, turn that, we'll just turn it off. Stop strings with multiple fingers is another option to make this work more like a real auto harp. And uh, as you know, if you strum an auto harp and then you want to just stop all the sound, you can lay your hand across the strings to mute them. And this kind of replicates that ability. Um, right now we have it set to force fingers needed to stop the strings. And so that means if I strum, and then I touch the auto harp with four fingers, all the sound will stop. Okay? The reason it's configurable with the number of fingers is that depending on your strumming style, you might be strumming with four fingers at a time, and you don't want that to stop the sound. Um, so in that case, you could increase it to five. And now uh, four, stringer, four fingers won't stop the sound, but all five fingers will. And if this just gets in the way of your playing, of course, you can just turn it off. Now, the next two options do things that an auto harp definitely can't do, but they're meant to be aids to playing on the iPad. First one is show active strings, and this highlights the strings that are unmuted uh, when you touch a chord button. Okay, and so this really helps you visualize how the, how the auto harp is working. So if I touch this chord button, the yellow strings are the strings that make sound. And so that makes it easier to pick out individual strings if I want to. Or just see where, where the strumming is going to take effect. And again, if no chord bars are pressed, then you hear everything. Uh, the next option, leave buttons pressed, uh, makes it a little easier to switch between chords. So now if I press a chord bar, and then take my finger off, it stays down until I press another one. So if I need a little time to get to the next chord, I can use that. All right. All right, now let's turn those back off. There's one more option here in the settings called Send MIDI on Channel, and then it lets you choose a channel. And this really only applies to people who use MIDI software or hardware, but it allows you to use the auto harp interface as a MIDI controller. I just selected send MIDI on channel 8 and I'll close the window and I've got a computer set up over here um, and I am going to connect my iPad to it through Wi-Fi and I'll post a link underneath this video showing you how to do that if you're curious and then I just have logic running on my computer and uh, logic uh, I've pulled up a track that has a piano sequencer. And so now that the app is sending MIDI on channel 8, when I play a note on the auto harp, it plays a note on the piano over there on my computer. And the sound of the auto harp itself is still playing, but if I turn the volume down on the iPad, now we just hear the piano sound over on the computer. And it's touch sensitive. If the touch sensitive is on, on the iPad, then the uh, MIDI signals will have volume 
uh, sent with them, so the uh, sequence sound will be touch sensitive as well. Switch it over to an electric piano. Yeah, and an organ. And you can do some interesting things. Here's a uh, string section. Okay. Looks like the strings are on an infinite loop, so let's use our stop strings with multiple fingers option. And that stops our sound. Alright, so you can have fun with the sequencer if you uh, have any MIDI equipment. Let's just turn that back off and bring our volume back on the iPad. And then we need to go back to the customized layout. Option. So again, this is more of an advanced feature, but if you've ever wanted to tune your auto harp differently to give yourself access to different chords or to optimize the sound of a particular key or even a particular song, this is a great way to do it because you don't have to retune your auto harp. And not only that, you can set up lots of different layouts and just have them saved in a list and just quickly choose between them. Let me just very quickly show you how this works without getting into too much detail. Um, we could tap new layout and that brings up a completely empty window. Um, so I can enter a name and I'll just call this my demo layout. I can choose whether to make 15 or 21 chord bars. And then I can choose the note that each string on the auto harp is tuned to. So for string one, let's choose E, string two, F, string three, G. Okay, um, so I'll save that, and now I have my demo layout uh, with my three strings defined. Uh, now, I've defined the strings, but I also need to define what strings each chord bar plays. So if I scroll down further, past all the strings, I see the options for the chord bars. This gets a little trickier, um, but if I choose chord bar number one, I can name it, that's the label that's going to appear. Uh, let's say I want this to be an E minor chord. And then I can choose the strings that that chord bar activates. So an E and a G would be the root and third of an E minor. Uh, let's save that, and then let's make another chord bar for an F chord. And that's going to play the F string. Okay, so I obviously haven't set up the whole layout, but at this point I have two chord bars and three strings, so we, should, we can do something. So I'll choose my demo layout, and you see I've only defined two chord bars, so only two of them have letters on them. But if I choose the E minor and then strum down here, I should be hearing my E and my G. And if I choose the F chord, I'm hearing my F note. Okay, so obviously you can build it from there. Now notice, by the way, that the uh, chord bars are sequenced... Um, in rows first from left to right. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and so on. Uh, in the 15 chord bar layout, uh, it just goes from top to bottom. So that's a little more straightforward. Now you could create a layout from scratch or you can take an existing layout and copy it. So let's go into our standard 21 layout. And if you just want to make a few changes, you can choose the copy button. And that renamed it to standard 21 copy. I can enter a new name if I want. And now I can just change either the, either the strings or the chord bars or both. Let's say I want to add a C diminished chord. I already have a C minor, which is playing a C, a G, and there should be some E flats in here. And so what I want to do is change all the Gs to G flats. So let's take out that G. Let's change this uh, G to a G flat. And change this G to a G flat and there's one more G here that we change to a G flat and save that Oop. and actually before I save that let me change my label 
I'm just going to enter C, D because dim probably isn't going to fit on that chord bar and unfortunately the iPad doesn't let us type that little circle that some people use as an abbreviation for diminished. And so now I see that bar 7 has a C diminished chord. So I can save that. And what are we? Standard 21 copy is our layout that we've been working with. So I select that. And now my chords load up. And where is it? There's my C diminished right there. So again, the ability to add multiple layouts is a paid upgrade. Uh, it's $3.99. Uh, but once you have purchased that, you can add a new layout from scratch, or you can edit an existing layout and copy it and then modify it. And then once you've built up your list of layouts, then all you have to do to change layouts is just tap one to select it. So now we're back to our standard 15, which is the default that came with the auto harp. All right, that, that's all the functionality. There's one more button down here, which is the info button. And that brings up some basic instructions and the dedication to Maybell Carter, who was my introduction to the AutoHarp, and most importantly, a link to autoharpapp.com. And if you have any questions or need help or are having trouble with the app, just tap that link. And from there, you can find an email link that goes straight to me, and I'll be happy to help you. So thanks for watching, and I hope you have fun with the AutoHarp.